high. We have seen what happened in Victoria and it is on the increase. Yet we have the army and health officials door knocking the people tested positive for COVID-19 and find them not isolating. They were outside home. This is, should be considered as a criminal matter. This is what the other states should learn from and why aren't they going hard and seriously on this matter? Thank you. Dr. Karen Phelps. I think this is a really important question because isolation is really the best thing that we have to protect the community when somebody has tested positive for COVID-19. The other thing that we can do, which is such a simple thing, is to have everyone in the community in masks. We need to anticipate that there will be a next wave in New South Wales. At the moment, the numbers are relatively low, but there's nothing to stay, say that they will remain low. We need to do whatever we can as a community, and it's not about what you can get away with. It's about what you can do to think about how you can contribute to suppressing the next wave to elimination. Because what we need to do is to stop thinking about just suppression and living with COVID-19. We need to be thinking about elimination. We can do it. We got very close to it. We just needed to hold the line and get it, get it to the point where we had no community transmission anywhere in Australia and then stop the, the, the virus can, from coming into the community. Are you saying masks must be compulsory in New South Wales or in Sydney at least? We need to head towards them being compulsory. There is now, I think, much stronger wording around the recommendations. Masks are strongly recommended in particular situations. For example, where you can't physically distance, if you're in a lift, if you're in public transport, if you're in an indoor environment where you can't consistently maintain physical distancing. But of course, we know with aerosol uh, transmission now, with airborne transmission, that wearing a mask is, is some of the best protection that you can have. You protect yourself, you protect others. There's been this nonsensical debate for months now, which has been so frustrating because it just has not been evidence-based about wearing masks. It is one of the single most responsible things that we can do as members of the community to protect each other. What we need to do now is to work out which is the most appropriate form of masking to wear that's affordable, accessible, and environmentally friendly. I can see all of you nodding to this, but Lucy Morgan, <laughs> uh, I do want to bring you in here. We, the question was about tougher penalties, criminality, mm -hmm. uh, if people are not observing the regulations, particularly when it comes to isolating. As someone working at the acute end of this, it must be shocking when you hear the, the numbers, certainly in Victoria, of people that were not at home when they were door knocked after testing positive. Uh, yeah, Hamish, there's no doubt that that sort of um, fairly flagrant breach of a recommendation is, in, is enormously frustrating. Um, I mean, that, that's an understatement, uh, um, to see um, at, at, the, at, a, at that end of, of things. I, I guess um, the, the big deal is uh, what do you do about it? I don't know what to say about the criminality. I, I guess as a clinician, um, um, anybody that's breaching those protocols is, is, is putting our community at risk and that's very frustrating. But I'm not sure that I think um, a shame game um, is, is very constructive. I think, in general principles, educating and supporting people to make sure that people understand the right things to do, whether uh, it is, is a more constructive way around it. Um, I, I'm certainly not in favour of, um, of public shaming. Um, Vion? Hamish, can I, if I can jump in there, I mean, in Victoria, our home state, it's actually been close to one in three people who are not isolating over the previous week. And I think I have a, a visceral, uh, you know, kind of bitter reaction as everyone else. Uh, but the truth is we have to look at the, the systems approach here. You know, why aren't people doing this? Could it be it's because people are waiting long periods of time for their test results to come back? Could it be because the, we had no paid pandemic leave until very recently? So we have to really consult with people, see what the issues are, address them. We have to raise, you know, kind of awareness and people's understanding and, and then try to follow up with kind of carrots and sticks as potentially a last resort. What we don't want by being overly punitive is to have this kind of compensation in people where they go, well, I don't ever want to end up in that position of someone knocking up to my door, checking if I'm isolating, if I tested positive. I just won't get tested. Mm, yep. So, right. you know, I yep, have a point. pretty terrible negative reaction, but the truth is uh, my anger, I realise, only has limited utility in this. It's exactly as Lucy said, what do we do about it that matters? Lucy, just on the mask, the point that Karen raised, she thinks that we should be moving closer in other parts of the country beyond Melbourne and Victoria. 
Do you have a view on this? I mean, it doesn't cost a lot to say to people wear masks, but the cost of this spread getting out of control is enormous. Uh, that's a very good point. It doesn't cost us much to wear a mask. Um, uh, in the early days when there were low n numbers of cases around, the actual usefulness of the masks was um, less important than the messaging about hand hygiene and about uh, physical distancing. Um, but as the numbers increase, the risk of transmission um, gets higher and higher and surely it's a pretty easy thing to do for your community to wear a mask. So I think uh, I am... Um, my, my feeling is I am... Uh, coming round to the idea that masks should be everywhere. Um, we've always been wearing masks in hospitals. We've been wearing masks in clinical settings, but this is a different scenario. This is wearing masks in the community. And, um, and I agree with Karen that we should be wearing masks more and more. And okay.